my name is Laura Eisensee. I'm a journalist here in Houston, and I work at the local NPR station right here on the U of H campus, Houston Public Media. And there, I write stories about education. So I talk to superintendents, teachers, and my favorite, students, like you guys. Students like Alexa up there. I met Alexa over the summer at Hamilton Middle School in the Heights. It was at this creative camp, and she was using cardboard to build a TARDIS. Now, if you're like me, you'd ask her, what's a TARDIS? Well, at first she couldn't believe that I didn't watch Doctor Who, but then she filled me in. And during our conversation, I asked Alexa, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I want to be a surgeon. I'm just not sure what kind. And that kind of made me smile, because when I was Alexa's age, I wanted to be a doctor too. Instead, I'm on the radio. From the News 88.7 Education Desk, I'm Laura Eisensee. OK, so that's me. And up there, I'm doing my radio thing. You know, I have my headphones on. I have my microphone. I have my recorder. And you know, I'm here to tell you about my path in journalism and what I've learned from it and what I believe to be the power of journalism. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself. One is that I'm from Houston, born and raised, southwest part of town, Maplewood, Westbury. That's my home. A little bit about my personality is that I'm a planner, and I'm also a recovering perfectionist. So I don't know how you handle your homework, but when I was little, and my mom would pick me and my sisters up from school, I would get in the car, and I would tell her, I'm going to do my math, and then I'm going to do my spelling, and then I'm going to practice my piano, and I'm going to read my book. And I would do everything just like that. Boom, 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 boom. And I don't know if I'm more proud or embarrassed, but I can say that there are two times in my life that I've gone, gotten less than an A, and that was third grade arithmetic and 11th grade chemistry. Now, knowing that about myself, you might be surprised to know that I never planned to do radio. In fact, I almost failed my first radio class. And I never planned to write about education. I thought it was really complicated and intimidating. So you might be wondering, how does someone who really loves to plan end up doing something you never planned to do? Well, that's where my path gets a little bit interesting. So, my path in journalism started right here in Houston. I got a job at a Spanish language newspaper. And then Hurricane Katrina happened, and they sent me to New Orleans. And there, you know, the city was still flooded, the National Guard was in charge, and it was a really intense situation. And I ended up going back several months later to write about how immigrant workers were rebuilding the city and facing a lot of discrimination at the same time. And fast forward a few years, and I'm in Washington, DC. And I was helping cover the inauguration of Barack Obama as the first African American president of the United States. And I was up there in the press gallery in Congress when President Obama gave his first State of the Union address. And it was really cool to be literally on the front row of history. Fast forward a little bit, and I'm in Los Angeles. And I'm only there a couple of weeks when all of a sudden, my editor hangs up the phone and he says, Laura, go to UCLA Hospital. Something's going on with Michael Jackson. OK, so I go to UCLA Hospital. I figure out the freeway. I get there, huge crowd of people, fans, media, helicopters in the air. We don't know what's going on. I make my way to the auditorium. And there, the doctor and Michael Jackson's brother take the stage. And they say, the king of pop is dead. So as you can tell from those few stories, my path in journalism is literally all over the map. It is not a perfect straight line. And it's nothing I planned. I mean, there are right-hand turns and left-hand turns and U-turns back to Texas. And you, know, you might look at that map and you might think, that's really cool. Or you might look at it and you might think, gosh, that's kind of scary. That's a lot of change. Or you might just wonder, how did that happen? 
Well, one reason it happened is because I listened to a mentor of mine. I went to graduate school because I wanted to improve my craft in journalism. So I went to Columbia University in New York City. And there, in our first semester, my main professor, he had a special session all about careers. And he sat us down and he said, one day you are going to do something you never planned. One day you are going to do something you never expected. And I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. You know, especially, I think it bothered the planner inside of me. And it also made me curious. And it made me open to change, because just a few months later, a different professor asked, hey, Laura, what are you going to take in the spring semester? And I said, oh, I'm going to take that magazine writing class, because my plan is to write for magazines, and my plan is to write a book. And he said, well, what about radio? Why don't you take the radio class? You're going to become a better writer. You know, you're going to create journalism in its purest form. There's no words for people to read, like in newspapers. There's no images for people to watch, like in TV. All you have is sound and people's voices. And you have to create the theater of the mind. So I switched. And I almost regretted it, because suddenly I was confronted with things like this. You know, this is my voice in audio waves. And at the time, I was used to writing on the computer. And all of a sudden, I had to create stories out of this. And I had no clue. There were other students in the class who had worked at professional radio stations before. And they knew that this is an S. That's an S in radio waves. And one reason you can tell is because it has that little tail at the beginning and then this big fuzzy thing. Well, again, I had no clue. I didn't know that. And I had to start from zero, which is a really scary place for a perfectionist. But I worked really hard. I pulled all-nighters. I called my aunt on the phone back in Texas and said, I just I don't think I can do this. I really I don't think I can do this. And she said, yes, you can. And I did. And I'm really glad that I did, because I learned a lot about myself. I made some really great friends. And it also gave me the skills. It laid the foundation for me to work in radio years later. And so when I started here at the local NPR station, those words from my professor, they came back to me. And you know, I've thought about it. And I've really come to embrace this idea of doing something you know, planning to do something that you didn't expect. And it still sort of bothers me, because there's still that planner inside of me. And even in my personal life, I like to dance. And I prefer, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, I want to know my steps. I don't want to improv. <laughs> but you know, the fact is, is that these paths that we, we see in school, or in college, or in the workforce, they're changing. I mean, my industry, journalism, we don't know what it's going to look like in 10 years. And other industries are changing too. You know, law, medicine, technology, some are just changing faster than others. And then there are the jobs that haven't even been invented yet. I recently learned a really interesting statistic. 20 to 25% of the jobs that are going to be most in demand in a generation they don't exist right now. So how can you plan for something that doesn't exist? And that's my point. You can't. But you still have to find your way. And how do you do that? Simple. You find your compass. And what is a compass? I mean, a compass tells you north, south, east, west. And it guides you. And it helps you find your way when you're lost. But in life, what's your compass? Well, you have to find your own. And you can find your own by asking questions like, what am I really passionate about? You know, what problem do I want to solve? How can I make this world a better place? And for me, my compass has been a number of things. You know, I think it's been the advice of my mentors. I think it's been the support of my family and friends. It's been curiosity and creativity, because I love meeting new people and learning new things. But above all, it's been a desire to tell stories. Stories about real people and stories that matter and can make a difference. 
You know, and so I think about some of the stories that I've done here recently in Houston, and I can tell stories about problems in schools, like schools suspending too many students of color, and hopefully that can make a difference and change that problem. And I can tell stories about really amazing students, like Jonathan, who told his teacher his biggest, darkest secret that he was undocumented, and inspire other students. And in fact, his story inspired his teacher because then she created a program to help other undocumented students go to college. And so, and what's so amazing about telling stories on the radio is that people, students like you, you can tell your story in your own voice, with your own words, and express your own emotions. And other people, they can hear that, and they can listen. And that can create change. And that's really powerful. So I want to thank you for your time. And I want to encourage you again, don't plan your path. Find your compass and just imagine the possibilities. Thank you. <laughs>